Hey guys, welcome back to the Buzz Weaver channel. And in today's top stories and breaking news, at least last night in the very late evening here, Eastern Time, we see this from The Guardian. They're lying to you. Russian TV employee interrupts news broadcast. That's right. Marina ran out to the set of the Channel One transmission shouting, Stop the war, no to war. An employee of Russia's state Channel One television has interrupted the channel's main news program with an extraordinary protest against Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The left was so excited, the progressives and all those who were concerned about the propaganda coming out of Russia that has been censored, and of course, the fact that many Russians, if not all Russians, particularly those in Russia, to be more specific, have been under sanctions. So these are the very same people that are protesting that are also being punished. And of course, here in the United States, I had to remind everyone. So while everyone was excited, right? Everyone was just cheering and they were all excited. I had to make a, an immediate tweet to remind everyone, bring back people into reality. A brave Russian who Facebook and Instagram recently modified its rules to disparaged, interrupted a broadcast at her place of work to denounce the war and expose propaganda. If you call out fake news in the U.S., you're deep person. That's right. How quickly the people forget that when individuals here in the U.S. call out the media, like President Trump or Alex Jones or others, for example, Ivory Hecker. TV reporter Ivory Hecker fired after accusing station of muzzling her release his recording. Now, all she did was, now she was just muzzled. She didn't come out and broadcast something or hold up a sign, right? A Texas news reporter has been fired after she interrupted a live segment to accuse her network of muzzling her and then later released secretly recorded videos she she had okay she said backed up her claim. So she had the evidence, she had the information, she backed it up and she was fired. Of course cuz here in the states there is a narrative. There are two sides in the United States here. One could argue as it's been mentioned that we have groups of people who believe that we are a constitutional republic that practices uh, democracy. And then we have another half that believes in cultural democracy and the practice of authoritarianism and censorship. And that's what we have. And this is why it's so important to pay close attention to the language, to the tribes, to the sides. Because as quickly as everyone was celebrating this, people seem to forget when it's your tribe, when it's your side who's trying to make a point, who's trying to suggest certain things like Russia's propaganda, the same could be said about you and yourself. Because this is why the left has to control the narrative. They have to control the language. They have to control the airways because with that, they can control the direction of what is happening in our country, in our culture. They want to socially engineer. It's just all there is to it. It's very simple. And it's interesting to see the continuing wrangling that we're seeing from what would be, okay, let's just call the, the mainstream media and the Western media, let's just call that as, as not engaging in propaganda. But this is what they're saying. I'm not going to mention any names, but someone is looking for a fight. WMDs 2.0. These signs look incredibly familiar to how World War I and World War II started. As I mentioned, from uh, Battlefront, NATO masses 30,000 troops and 50 warships for huge war games on Russia's... Uh, I can barely see this, guys. Russia's border risking Putin's, what is that? Roid rage wrath. Now, see? So not only are they just talking about Putin, they're mocking him and making fun of him because that's completely acceptable to the left. U.S. Ukrainian officials brace for a possible Russian chemical attack. Really? I thought there was no chemical labs in Ukraine. Remember? There was no labs in Ukraine until, well, there were labs in Ukraine. If Putin uses chemical weapons... Uh, according to them not being labs in Ukraine, if Putin uses chemical weapons in Ukraine, it's a game changer for NATO. Really, are the people dying in Ukraine a game changer? Are the people dying right now in Ukraine, is that a game changer or not? NATO, chief warns Russia, may use chemical weapons against Ukraine. I thought there was no chemical weapons in Ukraine. There wasn't any, remember? It was a conspiracy if you said there was. You were a conspiracy theorist if you said there was labs there. Remember, Alex Jones said it too. So clearly Alex Jones is a conspiracy theorist, right? Russia, Ukraine. Parliament of NATO country Estonia calls for immediate establishment of no-fly zone. So no chemical factories in Ukraine. 
And if, and if we call for a no-fly zone, that would be a prelude to war. That would be the introduction because NATO would have to enforce that no-fly zone. Then, of course, the people on the ground in Ukraine would have to be able to identify the various aircrafts that are in the sky so that uh, NATO forces aren't shot down. All that stuff requires coordination. All that stuff requires good communication that may not necessarily be happening right now there because we already know, according to the mainstream media in Europe and the U.S., the Russians are supposed to be losing, remember? Russia is supposed to be losing. That's the demoralization. That is the actual propaganda. But yet, of course, they got to block RT and Sputnik because, of course, uh, they don't want people. Here, here's the thing. I made a post yesterday, and uh, I want to – before I get too far along in this, why establishing a no-fly zone over Ukraine would be very dangerous and costly. No, it, it would be a prelude to war is the way Time Magazine would have would have phrased that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over here to Twitter, and I'm going to – See where my, where my post was that illustrated this. So, just want to excuse me, guys. I had to do something there, so that was a little bit of an edit. So, Democrats cancel culture and Trump detractors resort to censorship because they can't compete with better ideas and solution. They also want to control language and ban people so that those competing voices can't defend themselves or propagate influence. Because you guys know if you've been watching the channel. The left, do, the left does everything it can to shut down anybody that goes against their narrative. So we see here, full Saki quote from Taylor Lorenz audio. If you look back at 2014, and frankly, even 2016, when Russia invaded Ukraine, and then in 2016, when they, you know, of course, hacked our elections here, we did not do that. We did not declassify information. Wow. Absolutely amazing. They didn't declassify information, but they removed a sitting president off of uh, social media. Crooked Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails after they were subpoenaed by the United States Congress. Not to mention she also dismissed the subpoena. Remember they made a big deal out of Steve Bannon? Have you heard anything about Steve Bannon? No, Steve Bannon was no dummy. He, he, he dismissed the subpoena as well because there was no legal merit for it. Because what they do is the left goes after their political enemies. They use the FBI. They use the CIA. They use whoever they need to. Because we saw for two and a half years, the left perpetrated a fabricated story of Russian collusion. But you see, when you, when you do something that the left and the, and the media and the progressives and the cancel culture and woke like, it's totally fine. It's so cool that she came out there and protested, despite the fact that they're being sanctioned, despite the fact that Facebook is allowing for them to disparage Russians, of course. But you see, when it's on their side, when it's their tribe, they can selectively enforce what they want. They want exceptions to the rules. They don't want the rules to entirely apply to them unless it's necessary for a particular individual under a particular circumstance. But for everyone else, right, as we say, or as I say often, the left does not hold itself to the same standards they expect from everyone else. Everyone else is a perfect target for them because, of course, they're the arbiters of truth. They're the ones that have all the information because they're the ones that have the sense of understanding, right? They're the ones that empathize. They're the ones that have the, the, the proper motives, as it were. But nonetheless, guys, it is quite an interesting and fascinating turn of events how easily here... The sanctioned people there of Russia, and then she goes on TV. And I, I'm sure the left is going to try to take credit by saying that this was, this is an example of the sanctions. The sanctions are working. See, they're co they're going to take credit for any little minute, ridiculous, absurd thing, while not taking blame for the fact that we have higher gas prices, higher retail prices, higher furniture prices, higher used and new car prices, among many of the inflation uh, aspects of what we're experiencing here in the country, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I meant to say earlier. Uh, the, the reason that the, the left does what it does and the progressives and those do what they do is because they consider themselves having good intentions. Their intentions are good. People just misunderstand them. People just don't understand what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve. And so it's everyone else's fault if you don't understand that what they're trying to do by making exceptions, by changing the way our Constitution works. Of course, they're just, they're just trying to ensure that everyone understands that they're good intentions. But nonetheless, guys, that's what I have for you guys today. And, of course, below this video, you can find the various social media links that I belong to where I post daily, like on Twitter. If you guys want to help me out then on Twitter, I would greatly appreciate that. And, of course, across all the regular new tech sites like Rumble, Odyssey, and BitChute, I want to thank all you guys for that. So, appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon to subscribe to the channel here, as well as to receive notifications. That way you know when there's content here on the channel. 
and I will see you guys in the next video.